All right, story by storyline. The first thing we see is Tyrion and Jaime, and it's a lot of recrimination. Yeah. Jaime, like, how could you throw away that chance, and how could you do this? And You're basically, uh, just as we said last week, basically just playing to exactly what Tywin wanted. Tyrion recognizes that and uh, points it out to Jaime. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, partly to me, that's the one thing. It sort of like Jaime doing that. It seems nice, but on the other hand, it's like it's nothing for Tywin to give yeah. it away. Uh, I mean, Tyrion seems to recognize that. Tywin doesn't really want to kill me, he just wants me out of the way. Exactly. So, I mean, the fact is, it's very likely Tywin to sort of spare the humiliation of having a son of his executed. Yes, this is a very public thing. It's a very public thing. We'll send them off to the wall, yeah. and there he doesn't quite go so far. And also there's a whole question of kinslaying and so on. Like, he doesn't want to be a kinslayer, that's why he has the judges, but yeah. still, if he's one of the ones pronouncing guilty, it's obviously having an impact on yeah. it. So, I, I actually think... Uh, and I don't know if they are willing... I mean, in my interview with Brian Cogman, he sort of says, well, it he did seem to present it as being more, but yeah, this is something that Jamie actually wins for him. But I think, realistically, they just let it be natural for Tywin. I, I don't think he would have... Uh, I, I, it just doesn't make sense that no. he would kill him no, I don't needlessly. Think really, yeah. And I think it is kind of a given that taking the black was an option. Now, in the book... It's specifically tied to a confession. Like, you have to confess. Don't take us for this whole trial f- malarkey. Yeah. Like, if you insist on going all the way to the bitter end, it's not an option. No. But, um, I mean, that's clear. That that shows that what Tywin is concerned about is the publicity. Yeah. The negative publicity. So, it, it probably really should have been actually a, a, a thing that he should have come forward with earlier. Uh, because it, the, the issue is the same. Yeah. It, it is the same for him. And I, I don't think the Tywin character is that different. But, that aside, uh, we also get stuff like Jamie. Yes, I, I was a little concerned when we saw Jamie fighting Braun in episode four, I think. Mm. And Jamie seemed to be having more confidence and it seemed to be a little bit more of a back and forth. And no, he's, uh, Braun is just, he, he's, he was, he's getting better from where he was, but he still sucks. I'm uh, not it's, going to be beating Gregor. Yeah, <laughs> he's no core and half hand. I mean, core and half hand, yeah. right handed, lost most of his fingers. Mm. Learn to fight with his left. Well, we with... don't know how long it took Corrin. It, yeah, but Corrin's an older man. It took, may have taken him a long time yeah. to get to that level. And Jamie hasn't had that time. So no. I don't know if Jamie will ever be there. I mean, I think you have to assume that Corrin had some latent ambidextry. Perhaps, ambidextrous, yeah. Ambidextrous talent. Yeah. But um, Jamie maybe doesn't. No. Very right hand dominant, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's, it's good. I think the scene itself works really well, especially towards the end. Um, although, although uh, a little logic thing, the whole thing that if his little morbid joke, and it is very Tyrion to have black humor morbid yes. jokes. That's, but, you know, he might have a little look on his face to, to, to see the, the family name snuffed out with a stroke yeah. of a sword. I mean, where's Kevin? Where's Lancel? Yeah. Uh, there, there are lots of other Lannisters, and I don't quite... That that was a little over overreaching. Yeah, it would be Tywin's name snuffed out technically, although we have Tommen and so on who don't, but they don't have the name. So, yeah. the family name for Tywin's descendants would be snuffed out unless Cersei ends up having a kid and that. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, but a little overly dramatic. It's a little overly dramatic. So, but that's a, that's a nitpick, I guess. And um, then we have Gregor and Cersei. Now that. That might have been in the lows, though, because it's so over the top. Yeah, like the, the I mean, monster. it's not even a scene. It's not even... Really I wouldn't call scene. it a scene. It's it's like just a brief introduction. And yeah, it shows Thorpe Jernson's I guess they, want, they had to show him once before the trial, the fact that we've got a new Gregor again. And this is this one yeah. is probably the closest we've ever had to how yeah. Gregor should look. Although he's much too young. I mean, he's supposed to be Rory McCann's... Uh, Sanders' older, older brother, <laughs> and he's like twenty years younger. So, and it, it, I, I was looking at it, I was like, you know, I don't think he's in his forties. No. So there, you just have to kind of suspend killing his people keeps you young. Yeah, he's splashed with the blood. Yeah. And given the recent research about how blood can sort of, yeah. you know, maybe he drinks a bit of it. Could so I mean I but he's he's enormous. I mean he is uh, a strong man. He in Iceland, he is uh, one of the top. Um, athletes in in that uh, area in the world, uh, just absolutely, just ridiculously enormous. And I, I love Vice had this thing about strong men in Iceland. They actually yeah. had a feature of him where they were interviewing him, and they and he was getting tattooed, 
and uh, by a tattoo artist who kind of was specialized. He the one who was getting tattooed? Yeah, he was on being tattooed, okay. and the tattoo artist specialized in a lot yeah. of uh, the athletes, the muscle maker, yeah. and he was commenting and loving. You know, he hurts doing this for hours, sitting there for hours, doing getting a tattoo. It hurt quite a lot. And Thor, you know, he just falls asleep during it. Like he, and it's funny because Gregor has an enormous pain tolerance, That's apart true. because of the book of the poppies. So I thought, wow, I mean, he couldn't cast someone kind of better in that sense. I mean, yeah. he's not as big. And I mean, that's hard. I mean, he's like six foot ten, which is gigantic. But I mean, Gregor's like a foot taller than that. So, just, and still has that sort of massiveness about him. So, yeah, you can see why people wouldn't want to fight him. But, mm. um, it's really brief. It's just, it's just the idea that, yeah, he practices by killing off, you know, condemned prisoners or what. Yeah, it is condemned prisoners, I guess, who are kind of given a chance. Well, here's some weapons. If you can kill him, we'll, we'll let you go. And, yeah, it doesn't work. So oh, what sort of practice is that? Yeah. Right? Now, a lot of people now. Hopefully, now people finally shut up about it because this scene shows him, you know, impaling a guy and lifting him over his head and flinging him across. Yeah. People saw shots of this from filming, and they thought, "Oh, that's how he's going to end up fight fighting against Oberyn." Yeah. And he'll be doing that. It's changing. No, no, no. It, it was people were watching a rehearsal of that particular scene. Yeah. Um. So that's that. Um. Yeah. It, huge. That's. They got what they were looking for as far as that goes. Yeah. It's a little... Oh, it is over... Not a little. It's a lot over the top as a reintroduction. I mean, we never yeah. have this idea of people... Then prisoners being sent out to be executed. Yeah. It's not... Whatever. Yeah. Um, then we go then, appropriately enough, to, to Arya and the Hound. Yeah. Or we see them. Um, I thought the, the discussion, while being surreal, was pretty good. Yeah. I, the... the, the the philosophical aspects of it. Yeah. Um, I guess we've mostly discussed this one already, so I... I yeah, probably covered that one in quite a lot. Obviously else? mentioning, perhaps, obviously now we have Roger and Biter being dead, which they're not. Yeah, um, that is a the, deviation. Uh, it's quite are, a deviation. At this point in time, it's quite a different story that they're going with them. Which it's, means, obviously has an impact on another character's story, we won't mention which, but... Yeah, no, it does. They're not around to bite people. Yep, yeah, that is, the bite and attack people, that is yeah. a, a good point. Um, and also the fact that they are still in the employment of the Lannisters, essentially. It seems True, to be the implication. They, yeah. Or at the very least, happy to collect the bounty. Yeah, I mean, in the books, they ended up joining up with the Brave Companions, and they yeah. were never introduced, so they were kind of just generic Lannister soldiers yeah. there. I mean, I mean, obviously, Jack didn't end up wearing the full Lannister armor for some reason, yeah. whereas they didn't. They, um... Yeah, that's an interesting... It is an interesting change. They obviously can do stuff with it similar things later but I mean obviously we'll we'll get into that a little bit later actually in this episode but uh, after that is John and Castle Black very brief scene yeah. initially the return everyone's you know, congratulating them on, on getting through a lot of focus on Jon Snow making it out alive uh, and, and sort of leading it um, I, I saw some people argue that this is the whole point of that exercise that John was supposed to become more of a leader as anyone could see I, I felt like if you actually look at what's there they didn't really no, because he didn't. There was no. Plan. He didn't merit it really, because I mean, he didn't do any planning. It was Locke doing the planning, and and then they just rushed in willy nilly. Yeah. I, that 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 was badly handled. Yeah. But um, the thing is, obviously, the whole point is that already they said, well, he's popular. He's already liked, yeah. right? People already think he's a pretty great guy. Um, so they immediately start trying to undermine that, but with the whole discussion about sealing the tunnel, and, you know, it was interesting. I. I it's perfectly so. Obviously, I, I felt a little troubled by it, but in the sense that it made it... If you didn't know better, you'd think, like, this tunnel through the wall is the only tunnel through the wall. Yeah. Whereas, um... The Shadow Tower and Eastwatch, I assume, have tunnels as well. Yeah, it'd be very awkward if they had to go all over the Castle Black every time. Well, I mean, you could read it as, well, at Eastwatch, they go around the wall on the shore, and at, at the Shadow Tower, they go through the gorge. I suppose that's possible. I suppose. I I don't know if I buy it, though. I think they do have tunnels there. Mm. So it is a little awkward there. But yes, fine, the argument that Castle Black's tunnel being closed means the rangers there can't get out and see, you know, give them that mass sort of bearing down on them. I mean, the Shadow Tower was mentioned in the second season, when cause that's where Corrin and company were. True. I don't know if Eastwatch has been mentioned. Yes, yes, it has. In the first season, um, mm. Dorian was sent there. Oh, that's true. At Eastwatch. So... No, that's been mentioned as well. Anyways, that aside, I think, um, I don't know. It's really sensible. And I, I don't know why I like the fact that Foreign is so opposed to it. And he's, he's opposed mm. to it. 
in part because John is for it, and in part yeah. because he, I mean, he does raise the argument, like, we won't be able to range, won't be able to see what's happening, but I, you know, you can kind of know what's happening. You know what's happening, and, you know, standing on top of the wall, you can see people for a pretty long way up to the, yeah. the wood, so you'd at least see when they're just there, so. I mean, also, when they're sending John off, they're arguing about the fact that we only have a hundred men here. We can't afford to send anyone anywhere. Yeah. Where are they going to suddenly get the men that they can afford to send ranging north and perhaps lose? Yeah, no, no. Ah, it's fairly weak there, yeah. but it does... Uh, it's I one think... of those problems that keeps creeping in, unfortunately, when they change things. Things don't fit together in a logical way. Afterwards. Yeah, they don't come up with, yeah, they don't come up with good ways of They want making certain work. things said and done, and it doesn't, it doesn't always gel. I don't like their overall... Approach to... Overall planning of... Changing. Story arcs and yeah. character arcs in that I, d I don't think they have a good sense of when they're replacing material large scale. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, for example, I, now this is going back a bit. This is going back to six episodes since, because since that episode, Sybil Kelly had an interesting interview in zaptoit.com uh, in which it, it, it really highlighted this because, um, I mean, I had a problem with yeah. at the trial. It was she, I, I felt that it seems like she's being coerced to do this rather than just acting out of anger towards Tyrion and, you know, perhaps some bribes and such. In particular because of the implication of Sansa when we've had her saying that, you know, she'd kill for her. No, I, mean, I, I've interviewed Sybil, that's an interview I'll yeah. release later, and I think she says very similar things. She, she loves Sansa, she would never do anything to hurt yeah. her that she could. Um, and it seemed gratuitous um, to do that. And funnily enough, uh, Sybil Kelly in an interview revealed that she actually asked Steven and Nan, she didn't feel that Shay would do that. And her interpretation of Shay, she would not name Sansa. Yeah. She asked them to, to drop the line and they said, no, no, we, we, we need to keep it for whatever reason. Yeah. And she found it really difficult. Um, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, she yeah. does what they tell her, so she did it. But in her mind, that, that isn't what Shay would have done. I, I think this shows that when they change things, they, they, I don't know that they get a good sense of the characters, unfortunately. I, I don't trust their sense. And I also think that they are far too likely to write things to serve... The moment, to I think. serve the moment. Oh, this will be a great moment. And not but necessarily... That's a great way of looking at it, because, I mean, the idea of Shay caring for and protecting Sansa is their invention. The Shay of a novel could care yeah. less about her. Uh, so they invented it because it gave a, a nice... Emotional point for Shay gave some you know interaction some with Sansa, of the Sansa to interact with and him. so that worked then and now it seems convenient for them to, to just, drop it yeah discard it because we want a a moment where we want the danger you know playing up the danger reminding them that Sansa is going to be implicated as well and all of this and so that that that's that's not a sloppiness of their adaptation that's a sloppiness of their own writing where they yeah. they've decided to do this and then now they they could they could have argued it with her I think oh well you'll see. And then when you get the script for final, you know, later episodes, that it'll make sense then. Yeah. I I would assume they would have told her that though, and it doesn't sound like that's what they they did. They just no. said no. We we, we need this in the scene, and yeah. so you know, David and Anne, that's you're bad there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But that that is a digression. So yeah, but this is again a, a very forward moment kind of thing. Sometimes yeah. it's just like we're gonna throw out something because it. Works yeah, we for us want here. them to disagree about this point. We don't want them to do agree with John, so we will have them say these things, and even if it doesn't make sense. Yeah, a better scene is a Tyrion Braun that follows it. Yes, absolutely. a much better. Yeah. Um, Jerome Flynn. I, I hope we'll see him in future episodes. I don't know. I maybe he'll be in the audience watching the the trial. I have no idea, but uh, hopefully he will stick around. He's been such a great presence as Braun, yeah. I think. And uh, it was a great scene between them. I mean, sort of the realization dawning on him when he sees the fine clothing and yeah, realizes, okay, right. he's being paid off. He's got Lawless, yeah. you know, a fat, you know, plump wife who is almost heiress to Stokeworth. Yeah. But had uh, an older he, sister who... He makes it plain that he has no problem getting rid of the ones in the way. Yeah. Which is, you know, uh, it's nasty. I mean, yeah. Braun's a villain. Yeah. You know, however much he's a likable rogue in some ways, he is, I mean, that's pretty bad. I mean, it's been clear, in the novel it's been clear that Braun is prepared to do just about anything here. He's been played with more humor. So yeah. that may, I don't think it quite dawns on people necessarily that, yeah, he's planning murders here. And, uh... Um, 
but fine parting. I think yeah. a really good scene, and uh, you know, Braun would really lay down. Or we said this already. The argument for how you could maybe take down Gregor, but you know, one blow of that great sword of his, and yeah. you're done. So there's too much of a risk. Um, Danny and Dario, we covered, um, and then that leads to the most obvious lease, which is I thought was uh, after that scene. So I mean, we're skipping that. We would discuss that one yeah. a lot. So now that's the one I, I know the nudity for where, you know, and some where she's in the bath it's and it's all quite well casual. Yeah. I thought it was well handled. I, yeah. I didn't feel like, I mean, Crease is a beautiful woman. I, I mean, I didn't get concerned when I first saw the scene that they were planning to have some little sexual tension going on there. No, I mean, I don't think that's the, the idea. Celise, the sexual tension is more of a fact that Celise is... Looking at her and one inadequacy, like this is what yeah. my husband wants. Like, yeah. I can't give him. I'm not as beautiful as I yeah. can. So it's a tension of, of yeah. her, her inadequacy and, yeah. and sort of. But it's something that you can see it in a twisted way. Like you know, she's sort of, she's sort of accepts it as sort of this thing that is important that she kind of yeah. is uncomfortable with. But her in her zealotry, she believes that she thanks the gods that they sent Melisandre. Yeah. them. He says, you could bring the sun that I couldn't, which yeah. is you know, just, I don't think shadow babies are really sons but um but I, I thought it was the interactions were great and I yeah. thought I thought it was a nice quiet moment between them and then and one that is very revealing in some ways because obviously Montenegro steps out of the bath and points out and here's these various potions and powders I have and they are there to you know not everything I do is magic no. some of it a lot of it is tricks she feels she is she feels like she she's like a she is she has to perform miracles all the time to convince people. And if she can do it through magic, she'll do it. And if she can do it through art, she'll do it. So I think this is something that does come out eventually in the books at a later stage. Oh well, it's purely it's purely internal where Melisandre thinks these things to herself. But um, yeah, I, I could see it. They changed to Lisa enough that perhaps confiding in her, and it's interesting because obviously yeah. they. It then turns that that confiding in her turns towards the whole point of Shireen. And yes. And Lisa's concerns about her and the way that she's been marked by her And another one of these little spoilers. So it's sort of maybe it's a spoiler. spoiler. Maybe it's their decision. Um, I, I think it's a spoiler. I think that, it's a spoiler. I think it's confirming something that I, yes. I've long held a theory of, which is yeah. um, she says that, you know, the gods, the god needs Shireen, yeah. uh, Lord of Light. It's his plan for her. Uh, I, I think that the spoiler is, for, for me, I think is also that I haven't really thought that uh, Celise is in on it, but I think that in it, the book, yes, I, I think there I don't. I actually think so now. She was even arranging her marriage, wasn't she? <sighs> Keeping up appearances. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't. Okay. I don't. But okay, you, you could be right. I, yeah. I could be wrong. But uh, it's something about it just seemed like it seemed like a likely thing, perhaps. I could see it, I, I suppose. But, um, yeah, the idea that Lorelai has a plan that she has to go with them yeah. when they go up to the wall, uh, the north, presumably, um, is a big one. I mean, it's, it's been my speculation all along, but there will be a real Iphigenia moment for yes, the... first on. It's for those of you who know your Greek legends and tales, yeah. where, where he will need royal blood, then he'll look around and he'll see his daughter and... That, that'll be some dark, dark stuff if they yeah. go that way. But, um, yeah, I, so it seems, but it could just be, like, maybe speculate and they like the idea and they decide they're going to do it. Maybe they didn't talk to George about that. I don't know. So we don't really know if it's a spoiler. Yeah. We don't know exactly, that, that but I, I, I suspect it yeah. is, like, confirming that idea, yeah. but that concept that is lurking in the back of, of Especially Los because, Andres. I mean, there are prophecies or rather dreams that Shireen has in the books that have been left out. Yes. About uh, the stone beast and... Coming wait. to eat her and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, there's there's definitely stuff there that, that is suggestive. Um...